Indy Mogul. Welcome to this week's Movie Math. Here are today's headlines. Warner Brothers has plans for your favorite DC Comics characters. James Cameron keeps Avatar in the news with new details. Roller Coaster Tycoon is going to be a movie. And of course, the weekend box office. Now let's get started. As Marvel heats up theaters across the country with Iron Man 2 and audiences are abuzz about their fast and furious upcoming slate of movies, what about DC Comics iconic characters? After all, The Dark Knight is the third highest grossing movie of all time, and many even feel it was robbed of a Best Picture Oscar. Well, don't worry, because Warner Brothers isn't stupid, and they're prepping their own juggernaut of comic book entertainment as we speak. But first, they had to get their house in order. In September, Warner Brothers, who owns DC Comics, created DC Entertainment to manage the brand beyond the page. This new company is run by Diane Nelson, the former president of Warner Premiere, which is Warner Brothers' direct-to-video arm, and responsible for the recent crop of popular DC animated films. But just as Marvel guides its own properties rather than Hollywood, Nelson has put DC mainstays Dan DiDio, Jim Lee, and Jeff Johns in charge of shepherding their own properties to the silver screen. What's Jeff Johns doing right now? He's working on the Green Lantern movie, set for a June 2011 release date. Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, and Mark Strong star, while Casino Royale's Martin Campbell directs. What tricks does the movie have up its sleeve? How about a CGI Green Lantern suit for Reynolds? Recently leaked photos show Reynolds shooting in a motion capture suit, confirming the rumor that not just his suit, but all of his clothes will be created with CGI, so he can change his wardrobe at will. Expensive, sure, but totally worth the money if they can pull it off. A new Superman is also being fast-tracked, especially since if it's not in production by 2011, Warner Brothers will have to give a significant amount of the film's gross to the relative of Superman co-creator Jerry Siegel. After Brian Singer's much-maligned relaunch, this new Superman is being produced by Christopher Nolan and written by David Goyer, who are also hard at work on Batman 3. Why? Because to fill the gap left by Harry Potter when it comes to an end in July 2011, Warner Brothers wants to release at least one DC Comics movie every summer. And you know what that means? The Justice League is coming. Hey, don't forget about Avatar. With all these big announcements, it's hard for even the biggest grossing movie of all time to stay in the spotlight. This week, James Cameron gave a speech at the Seoul Digital Forum in South Korea, and he predicted that in less than 25 years, 3D will replace 2D as the standard format in all of entertainment, from movies to TV to what you watch on your laptop. Personally, I say for that to work, they're going to have to get rid of those glasses and go full on hologram. But Cameron is free to dream, and in his defense, those dreams often come true. He will, however, have to fight Jeffrey Katzenberg for the title of 3D Messiah, and Katzenberg fights dirty. As for staying in the news, Cameron will make headlines again in the next few months, which is when he promises to announce the release date for Avatar 2. He has noted that the new movie will take three years to make, but you can take four, Cameron, if it means more time on the script. From the people bringing you the Smurfs movie and Kevin James and the Zookeeper is Roller Coaster Tycoon the movie, because we all know how much fun it is to watch someone else play Roller Coaster Tycoon. But Roller Coaster Tycoon is the third best-selling PC game of all time in the United States, so its appeal to Hollywood is obvious. The movie will be a combination of live action and CGI released by Sony Pictures Animation. We can thank the Hollywood strategy of packaging for this little gem, as talent agency ICM represents all the talent involved, as well as game publisher Atari. Hey, it worked for Hasbro, sort of. Tony Stark may have won the weekend on paper, but it was Robin Hood that had everyone talking. Yes, Iron Man 2 came in at number one with another 53 million, bringing its two-week total to 212 million. But it fell 58% from its opening weekend, which is about 10% more than other sequels suffered in their second weekends. But Iron Man 2 is still ahead of the curve in terms of overall box office, both domestic and international, so it remains to be seen if the movie's in quote-unquote trouble. Meanwhile, Robin Hood opened at number two with 37 million. While that's on the small side for a summer blockbuster, that's more than Russell Crowe's last movie made in its entire run. In fact, it's close to the debut of American Gangster, but this time Crowe did it all by himself. But Robin Hood's real saving grace is coming from overseas, where it came in at number one with an impressive 74 million. 
Astoundingly, Robin Hood cost $200 million to make, most likely because it had to be reinvented several times, both in pre-production and production. So it'll have to continue its box office siege for quite some time to warrant a sequel. And a sequel is what Ridley Scott and Russell Crowe bet on heavily, and might have squandered audience interest in the process. And debuting at number three was Letters to Juliet with $13.7 million. That's less than half of the debut of Dear John earlier this year, but it still means that Seyfried is one of the few actresses of her generation that could open a movie all on her own. Watch your back, Katherine Heigl. As for Just Right, it opened at number four with $8.5 million. That's just a slight improvement on Queen Latifah's last starring vehicle, Mad Money. That movie went on to gross only $20 million, but it also opened at number six when it debuted in January 2008. Hopefully, Just Right will be able to do a full court press for the rest of the month before trying to score on DVD. And that's this week's movie math. As always, thanks for watching. And if you want my review of Robin Hood, check out my Facebook page in the notes section. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. Subscribe, comment, rate it.